I want to explain what I have here. So I'm burning two brush piles today. These are about uh, eight feet tall, maybe about 25 feet long. So uh, this wood is about um, four years old. That's been laying on the ground. It's from an old logging operation. It's a slash. So uh, it's got some mulch mixed in with it. So this is what we're looking at. So what I have here today, my technique of doing this is the wind is coming from this direction, blowing into the piles this way. So that'll help stoke the flames once it gets going. So what I have here is um, just a hand sprayer. Costs about 15 or 20 dollars one gallon sprayer I fill it with diesel fuel uh, I like diesel fuel because it's not explosive and it catches on fire and it's a little safer uh, I don't recommend using gasoline because uh, the fumes of that is more explosive so what I'm gonna do is spray some diesel fuel on an area where I think will catch which the wind is coming right in this direction now so I'm going to get her down in here. And again, diesel fuel is a lot safer to use than um, regular gasoline because the fumes of diesel doesn't uh, combust. It's not as explosive as gasoline. So I'm going to light a little thing so I could throw it in there. If I can get it started. Sometimes, sometimes a diesel is even hard to start. Easy day, the lighter is even hard to start. Okay, there we go. You see what uh, the wind blowing in that direction, and it's not a strong wind, and it's not even a wind, it's just kind of breezy once in a while. But the wind will take it and blow it in into the wood pile give the flame oxygen and that's what you want. So I'm in Tennessee and it's like April 29th so we still need burn permits so I got online this morning and uh, got a burn permit. And here uh, you could have, I live out in a county, this is a farm, a rural area. You still have to be 500 feet uh, from timber or dry uh, crop fields. But it's April, so there's nothing, and it just rained a day and a half ago. But I'm within uh, maybe 300 feet of the trees over that way, maybe four or 500 feet over that way. But get a burn permit just to be uh, safe. What I also have, we'll let this get going. This is a nice to have thing. So I have a ranger. And I've got an axe spray on the back and I fill this up with water. 65 gallon so it's got 65 gallons of water it's battery operated We've got 25 foot hose uh, sprayer on that so as this gets going I'll be looking for embers uh, downwind from where I'm burning 
I don't expect any embers. The soil here is still really moist. And it's been such a wet spring that the ground is really, really saturated. So I expect a pile like this even will take um, the way it's going it'll probably take two hours and it'll be burnt probably 80 percent down the way this is going and then the other 20 percent will burn over uh, several hours it's early in the morning here so i've got plenty of time to keep an eye on this I'm wondering if I should get some flame over here. I'm sure it'll catch, but... I think I will, just to get it going. Just to get a full burn. Another trick to uh, fires is, um, got a leaf blower. So if this wind died down too much, um, be able to get the leaf blower on it, and get some oxygen into the fire. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to try to walk the flame over to this area. Kind of hot. I'm just going to set it on fire. So there was a logging operation done here four years ago, and I've been cleaning up the property. I've got a bobcat with a grapple, and um, a forestry mulcher. So all the slash that was out here I was able to take care of. This is the bigger stuff so I just wanted to pile it up. A lot of the bigger logs that I had, I actually I didn't waste them. I actually put them in gullies, some dry gullies that I have uh, to help with the erosion there. So the big stuff, the big logs, the bigger logs, uh, I did put the use in some areas. But there was a lot. This is 17 acres I got. So uh, it's a lot of wood. I hate to just burn it like this, but uh, it's just kind of scrap wood bits and pieces. Okay, this looks like it's going great. That end will catch. Take it down that side. This side is looking good. Yep. So I had uh, 15 acres on the other side of that tree line that I did uh, a few years ago and kind of uh, a little tip to picking up slash and piling up trees is you kind of have to 
stack it in tight. Um, all of these trees, they didn't have limbs on them. Um, over the last four years since they've been cut down, they, they just kind of decomposed. So none of them had limbs. So once I pile this up, it doesn't leave a lot of gaps between the logs. Now you can see, you can see all the, everything is packed in here pretty tight. And because I was scooping it up with my uh, grapple, I was also collecting some of the mulch, mulch material. Uh, so it makes a good, uh, this is what it looks like. So it's just a good burn material. It's nice kindle. Now there might be some soil mixed in with that, but it's not going to be a lot. But um, yeah, so some people stack their their uh, piles, and they have too much gaps between the wood, and uh, you just can't put big logs in there. You've got to put smaller stuff in there too. Uh, you know, just like start a campfire from the small stuff to the medium stuff to the bigger logs. Um, and then when I was grappling it up there and stacking it, I'd keep compressing it down to make sure there was no voids or gaps. This is looking really good. Eventually this stuff, the coals will start collapsing down and make it a nice heap of hot coals which will uh, Really keep this going. Hopefully, there's no telling. The bad part about setting a big log, a uh, big pile of brush like this, brushing some logs on fire is if it kind of half catches and then it goes out, you know, you're usually waiting uh, several days. Um, just for the for the coals to go out. I've burned piles about this size before and you can come out here and it'll just look like white ash uh, but once you start poking around there's still heat in it and there's coals still under the ground so and there might not even be any smoke or anything but there's still embers down there burning like coal so if you have an unsuccessful burn and it's a half burn or a partial burn uh, before you start pushing it up again to restack it and things like that you really have to make sure that all the coals and everything are out or you risk hazarding your uh, machine whatever you're using a tractor or a skid steer this is looking good so far I just want to explain some of my thought process with this is um, so I have multiple wood piles to burn so what I want to do is um, before I light the second fire I want to see how the first fire gets going make sure it's burning fine verify the wind direction and everything and also uh, you know, create some smoke. So one fire makes half the smoke of uh, two fires. So just to keep down the smoke a little bit for the neighbors. For actually, there's not many neighbors in that direction. There's, there's about a thousand acres back here of other farms besides mine. That um, there's not a lot of neighbors back there, but and there's no crops in the fields yet. It's still early spring. And it's looking good. Fire is crackling a little bit, but not too much, which tells me there's not a whole lot of moisture in the wood. There's always going to be some, but it's not too bad. And what I found that when there's uh, when you're burning uh, wet wood, maybe that's less than uh, say six months old. It's really wet that uh, when it crackles and pops it usually shoots an ember and that's what uh, can cause an issue so 
I'm going to take a little walk around. I'm about um, 30 feet from the pile. And actually the heat coming off of this is so hot. This is about as close as I want to get to it. You can see there's a little bit of burn coming out from the edges. But that's fine. There's nothing out here for it to catch fire. And, um, and I've got my water. I'll put that out when it gets a little well, less hot. So I'll just take a walk around here, especially downwind, to make sure uh, there's no embers flying around. I've got a little pile that started right here, but that's mostly just a pile of mulch mixed with dirt. I'll walk downwind here, see if I notice any smoke coming from anything that an ember got away. Again, it is early spring. It's the end of April. Some things are even just now starting to sprout up. But uh, and we've had tons and tons of rain for the last couple of months. So I'm surprised there's not more coming out. Today's about uh, 60, 60 degrees. I'm not seeing any embers or anything burning. This wind is not a constant wind. Sometimes it's calm, but sometimes it blows, uh, you know, it's just kind of now and then blowing about, I don't know, five, ten miles an hour. But they're kind of like light breezes that just kind of pop through. thing I will say about um, you know stacking wood again is as you can see like on this end what I do when I stack the wood I'll stack it all from an end so when I'm when I'm laying the logs in I try to get a straight a straight edge as much as I can I've got a couple of overhangers like these uh, just because some of those were about 30 feet long and I didn't have a choice but uh, I'll stack I'll stack the wood with a with a good end on one side and all the rough edges on one side and then uh, what I did here is as I was getting smaller material I would come in from the side and build out the side so as it you know puts it on and it and it rolls down that it would uh, you know make a nice kind of straighter edge on it because as you're burning these anything sticking out from the wood pile is just going to burn off and fall down and and be outside of the wood pile and it's not going to burn so that'll be the uh, you know follow-up when you restack what the stuff that didn't burn and stack it back up and have a second burn so Right now, this is looking pretty good. The same with this pile. It's not a whole lot hanging off over the edges. There's not a whole lot hanging off this edge. And again, as I stack it up, 
kind of scrunch everything down. And for me, I threw some extra mulch on top just to, to make like the tinder. What I'll do uh, though is I'll come and I'll grab some of these other stragglers, throw them on top of the pile before I light this one. But you can see even here, there's a pretty good edge. There will be some things that are hanging out that uh, the flame is just not going to get to and it'll fall off away from the coals. So then kind of scoop it back in when it's all finished in a few days when it's uh, cooling down and restack it, whatever's left. So that's kind of how I pile my, my wood piles. You can see even with this wood pile, this looks like there's a lot hanging over there, but it was built out, but it's, it's burned down already. Uh, so these logs that are hanging will break off and hopefully fall into the, um, you know, coal pile continue to burn once it gets uh, once that all kind of breaks down so the fire has been burning now for about uh, 45 minutes so I'm going to take a little wider patrol around on the ranger with a sprayer and see how their embers are doing make sure everything's Still looking copacetic. Fire's looking good. I can feel the heat on my face from this distance. This is about 30, 35 feet. Get a lot of good charcoals going in there and it's a really intense heat. sprayer there we go there we go Don't want this to get too far out. This is the way all the heat is blowing out this way, so, so I'm just going to wet it all around the edges. So it's not spreading any further.
tour of the property, <laughs> the 50 cent tour of the property, and went on the fire smoke patrol with me. So, uh, check back in. So the fire's been going now for about one hour and 10 minutes. So it's all looking pretty good. And again, usually from wood piles I burn like this, somewhere about two to three hours. The pile is 80% burned down. And then it's, then it's really just the slow stop and watch it every now and then. See another little fire's picked up down here. So again, what what I what happens from what I see is um, the smoke is pretty clear now. So it's the piles are burning hot. But what happens is when they collapse down, it causes some of the charcoal pieces of it to break off and, and float away and that's what starts these little little ground fires so when you first start so when you first start a fire you have to keep an eye on the leaves and the other smaller material so when the heat uh, picks up the leaves or whatever the leaves that are have a burning ember on them don't go floating off but then after a while when they start collapsing down that's when the coal or charcoal -y kind of embers start to pop off or, or they're light enough that they'll float away in the heat and they'll do this kind of uh, little fires. As soon as I get a little break in the wind blowing that way, I'll go over and put those out. Oh heck, I'll go do it now. It's not like I'm doing anything. But rule number one when you're burning wood is don't become part of the fire yourself. So I try to stay out of the, the direction of the embers and the smoke.
this is three hours later since I started this pile first, that pile second. Looking great. Good piles of ash. This looks like a lot of dirt in here, but it's actually just uh, coals. And maybe some dirt that was on the bark of the trees, but it wasn't too much dirt mixed in with the wood at all. So this is three hours. Um, and again, it's, it is about 80% gone at this point. Um, this coal pile now, I mean, this will continue to burn down for the next several hours. Um, I started this early in the morning. So, at this point, I mean, the wind has even died down. So, there's, there isn't any uh, real issue with the uh, embers floating away at this point. But, um, yeah, it's looking good. But this amount of ash, uh, once the rest of this wood that you can see is, like, actually burnt down, this wood over here probably won't burn. Of course, these end pieces won't. Those will be stuff that I, uh, probably in about a week or five, five or seven days or so, when the coals have uh, cooled off, I'll come back in with my skid steer and the grapple and pile all the stuff back up and um, reburn it. Or if there's not too much left, I might just pick up these little scragglers and, and stick them in a ravine and that'll be fine. But I'll leave them here, definitely leave them here for, um, if I move them to another ravine or something, I'll definitely leave them here for probably two or three weeks or after a rain, just to make sure that they're, they're definitely stopped burning. And it's not like a piece of charcoal. So, yeah, you could even see like below this one log here, I mean, it is just a deep red, just like a charcoal grill is cooking. But that mound of ash um, is going to stay hot probably for about a week, four, five, six, seven days or so. Um, there's not any rain scheduled. Uh, to come for about another four days um, and it's just like one day of rain so one day of rain might put it out but we'll see all of these little fires that I put out are out stop smoldering which is good that stuff in there was too hot to get to before Of course, root balls, root balls don't burn. But even at this distance, about 20 feet, I still feel the heat. That's how much heat is coming off of these. So if you're ever burning, just make sure you have plenty of clearance from other structures and whatnot. So that's an update for now at three hours and again these things were originally seven or eight feet tall and about 25 feet wide so yeah it's looking good happy with it we'll give you an update in a couple more hours this is a follow-up to the wood burn piles getting burnt down and it did a great job this is about as good as a burn pile gets after burning there's very little left over a couple small remnants here and there 
There's a little more remnants around that pile, but this is an excellent burn, which says it was an excellent uh, stack. So I've got the root grapple hooked up to the bobcat now, and I'm going to pick up these few remnants. It's hardly even worth picking up, but um, as anybody out there knows who burned wood biles before, not only does the intense heat uh, kill everything off into the soil uh, for a long time, but when you burn wood and then it rains, which it did, it rained for a couple days since I burnt this, so this is completely cold and, and out, it's been two weeks, that uh, once the water molecules mix with the wood ash, uh, the water molecule H2O combines with whatever's in the wood and it creates an acidic, more acidic, you know, pH. Um, so the only thing that'll grow back here probably for the next year or two are those types of uh, weed species that really thrive on acidic soil. So what I want to do is go through with the root grapple on that I'm going to collect up some of these uh, wood remnants. Here's a root, little root ball, and then I'm going to just kind of scrape, scrape out this uh, ash pile just to thin it out so it's not so deep and acidic, and it has time to uh, come back naturally. But again, I'm going to go over this whole area with a dozer, uh, probably in the in the fall and uh, smooth it out and uh, plant uh, Kentucky 31 grass on it and get it growing so that's where we're at so for any of you out there who don't know what a root grapple is this is the root grapple it's got good sharp tines on it so you can dig into the soil a few inches up to uh, the rake part of it and you can kind of comb through the soil and uh, push things up. And then, of course, the grapple part will latch on to whatever I want to pick up. So, that's a root grapple. Here we go.
got that mass wind road. I'll start picking it up. And there's a little gully straight ahead there that I'm going to dump this uh, little bit of scrap in. Just dragging the tea through the dirt. See the pile get built up in front. Clamp down on it. So you can see what the rake does, just like a rake. A lot of the dirt and soil will just fall through it. That's what I want.
I'm just gonna kind of go through it and just kind of push it around just to mix it in to the soil. Of this over the season, it'll uh, as it rains, it'll kind of watch this stuff out. 